Well, good morning, everybody. Hi, I'm Sally Roper, and I'm coming to you from Ocherias in Jamaica. And I thought I would share with you this morning one of my kiln openings. Uh, it won't take very long. I don't have a lot of pieces in here. What I do have are some commissioned work, some prototypes for a potential job that I have coming up. And also um, a couple of very special pieces in here that I am doing for uh, PlayShare. And um, I'm just going to get on with it. So I have a, um, a Scut KMT uh, 1027 and my controller is here and I've been able to, because it's hooked up to Wi-Fi, I've been able to uh, monitor the entire firing uh, from the um, comfort of my living room as I can follow it online. It's, it's just a, a great feature and I'm really glad I upgraded my kiln to that. Um, so anyway, here we go. I'm going to wear my gloves. My kiln is at 136 degrees Fahrenheit and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to um, hurt my hands. Uh, yesterday I put my back out so I'm moving a little gingerly. Um, it's, it's still pretty sore and pretty stiff but I have some people coming by later today to look at some of these pieces so the kiln has to open so I thought I would just share it with you. So let's get at it. Um, rather than bring the camera in and show you all, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to pick up the pieces and, uh, and then I'll put them close to the camera so you can see how they look up up close. Now, one of the things that I have, and I'll just start is, uh, I made this in my last firing and I cut out, I do a lot of cutout work in my pottery and I cut out this V shape. And this pot did exactly what I thought it was going to do, and that was fold in on itself. And you can see, you can see how the um, how the piece is bent, and that that actually happened in the glaze firing. It was perfect during the bisque. So because this is a commissioned piece, I had to remake it. So one of the pieces, or the first piece that I'm going to take out is the same kind of design, except what I did was I didn't carve straight through. I left, uh, I left a piece here, which allows it to continue to hold its shape. So this is um, opulence glaze. I, I'm, I dip most of my glazes, and uh, sorry, most of my pieces I dip. Um, and uh, this is opulence sea spray with Blue Monday on the top, and then I took some Mako Light Flux, and I put a very thick layering about in the top, um, maybe top inch. So I'm getting a little bit of, of the flux coming down and giving some drip, which, uh, which is what the customer wanted, and uh, I was able to produce. So I'm really pleased with this. This is, uh, it came out exactly as I wanted. It's a winner. And I always do things in pairs, so um, she's going to get two of them. And, uh, and they're, they're really nice. And also inside the kiln, I have little trays for them to sit on because you put a little three inch candle on these and then you just light them up and they sit beautifully on a dining room table or uh, anywhere you want to display them. And I have a third one here and this is, um, this is for a, uh, an art house and restaurant that's just up the road from me. And uh, this is uh, their logo of the restaurant. So I thought I would make it into a lamp in hopes that maybe they would put these on their, on their tables. So in the same thing, it's gonna have it, its own tray and you put a candle on the inside, it's a hollow form. And uh, so that's a heliconia, which is uh, a very prevalent here in Jamaica. And I cut it on thirds so that when you're looking, um, when the flame or the light is coming through this side, you've got, you've got a, a, a solid wall behind it, which is why I do it in thirds. So if I did it in halves, um, then you would see straight through the piece and, and it wouldn't give you the reflection that you want. So that's how come when I make these lamps, which these are about, um, about 10 or 11 inches tall. Um, uh, yeah, I always cut my design in threes. So that's uh, a winner. And this piece is, uh, it takes a little bit of explanation. Well, it doesn't really. It is a, a lamp base that I made for somebody. 
and it is really tall. This is um, about uh, 19 inches tall. And uh, it is the fourth one of four. Um, I, made, I made them all in my last firing and one cracked. So uh, I kept very, very detailed uh, information about the ones as I made them. <clears throat> so I was able to make another one and this one will match up with the other set beautifully. So this is um, Opulence Glazes again. I poured it because I don't have a bucket uh, deep enough to, uh, to dip this. So I, um, I poured black, opulence black, over the whole outside of the piece. Inside is, uh, is unglazed. And then I turned it upside down. No, I lied, yeah. And then I dipped the top third into sea spray. And then um, when that dried, I turned it upside down and I poured sea spray around the whole side. So I got a double layer here. So this turned out uh, really, really well, and I'm really happy with it, and I hope my clients are too. And the reason why I don't have a whole lot of stuff in my kiln is because of that piece. It is uh, went into the kiln at nine, 19 inches tall, so it took up a lot of room. Anyway, this is one of the pieces that I'm excited to, uh, to share with you. Uh, from the um, textured class that Jess did in Clay Con 2021, um, she did texturing on wet clay, and um, and I've been doing a series of videos which I'm going to submit to Kevin in hopes that he'll put them all together and maybe present it onto Clay Share. But this is a textured bowl, and this is in Jess's Chun Blue, and uh, I did it in three layers. On the on the back it's just a little thin saucer it's about my hands are four inches so it's about five inches wide and about uh, maybe not quite an inch tall but what I'm really happy about is how Jess's blue broke over the texture that I put in there it's just fabulous this is uh, an absolute winner and it came out exactly as I had hoped it would so thanks to Jess for, uh, for making that glaze because I'm having a good time with it. Another piece that I did um, is uh, the same concept with just different rollers. These are MKM rollers. And, um, and this is, let me get my notes. I believe it is textured turquoise. I believe it's textured turquoise um, brushed on three coats on the back uh, and on the front and then um, blue rutile on the rim. So the texture came out really really nicely. I'm really pleased with that. Not all glazes are going to are going to work well with texture but that one did. So I'm already down a shelf here and we will continue on with this, and this is gonna go through fairly quickly now. Um, these are two saucers that I make that go with these, that go with these lamps, and I always use the same color as the bottom, so it just sits, uh, it just sits there like that, um, and it will catch the wax for the candles or anything that you put inside it. It also makes for a nicer presentation as it sits on the table. So I have a few of these in, in this, in this kiln load. <clears throat> so today is a beautiful sunny day. After I finish this, I'm gonna go and relax my back and sit outside in the sun because warmth is really, really good for, a, for an aching back. And if you ever wondered what to do with a broken kiln shelf, it makes a great... Uh-oh, that's stuck. Oh well, all right. Uh, oh yeah, okay, I see what happened. Uh, anyway, I will get that off. Anyway, it, it makes a great half shelf, which is what I needed to go around that big tall lamp. So this worked out really, really great. So if you ever break your shelf, don't throw away the pieces. They, they come in handy. And this is just a hand built. I don't do much hand building. This is just a hand built tray that I've made for a friend of mine and she has some magic shakers. Um, and I don't have any, but this is what she This is what she uh, wanted it for. These are some magic shakers that I made the other day. 
and uh, so they're just going to sit on there. So this worked out, uh, this came out really, really nicely. I'm really pleased with that. So I just did a slab, bent up the sides, and uh, you know, I was careful on the measurement, but that's it. And this is dipped in opulence glaze in um, autumn frost. And it, it will match the uh, it will match the bottoms of the uh, magic shakers that my friend has. Okay. Um, all right. This is another one of the textured dishes. So I'm new to brush on glazes. I I've been dipping uh, most of my career as a potter, and. Um, this is all new to me in, in brushing on glazes, so I'm learning as I go along. This is Smoky Merlot, again, with another textured dish. Um, let me see how easily you can see, all, well, you can see all the texture. And this is Smoky Merlot times three, just Smoky Merlot and um, light flux on the, uh, on the rim. And I like how it's dripped down onto the piece it really has done exactly what i thought it was going to do and i'm I, I really like this so um it this is a also a learning experience for me to get used to the new colors that um that that i'm getting out of um out of the amico brush on glazes so this also is another one, and this is textured turquoise, but the texture of this particular rolling pin doesn't go as deep as the others. So this is actually fairly flat there. Uh, it grabbed it more on the rim, uh, the texture. You can certainly see it, and, and that's as good as anything as far as I'm concerned. But this is um, textured turquoise and uh, flux on the rim. So. I could add more flux, but it's a very short rim, so I didn't really want to put too much. I just kind of dabbed it onto the onto the outside. And another one of the saucers for the lamps. And okay, I'm gonna put that aside. Let me get these little kiln posts because these shelves are only about an inch apart so we're almost finished I only have a couple more shelves to go I have invested in these advancer shelves um, they are light they're easy to work with as you can see they're really really thin I love them uh, in fact um, I went out and I bought after clay share con which has uh, exhausted my credit limit on my credit card but I did buy some, um, some new shelves uh, with Advancer. I love them. I love the simplicity of them, the ease to work with. I love that if anything drips on them, you just scrape it off. You can purchase along with it this scraping tool. And it just, sorry for the noise, but it just erases anything that's on these shelves. If you can afford it, uh, well, even if you can't afford it, you can almost afford not to get them. They, they're brilliant, they're wonderful, and they've made my life a whole lot easier. So I have um, this dog bowl that a girlfriend has asked me to make, and I use the Sandbow decals. And I applied the decal to the form as I was throwing it on the wheel. I do 99.9% uh, .9 of my stuff is wheel thrown. And um, so I just did a little cylinder, uh, a cylinder bowl, and then I applied the, the decal transfer. Um, and, uh, and then I took a rib on the inside and I gave it a little bit of a shape. And I have uh, glazed it on the inside with opulence white and their clear glaze on the outside so that the pattern will, will show through. It's not the best application, but, uh, but it's okay. I'm not unhappy with it. Okay, I'm gonna save these two little pieces for the last. And I'm now down to the bottom shelf. Like I said, that I don't have a lot of pieces in here in this, um, in this kiln load, but the pieces in here are important. <laughs> okay. I should wiggle the shelf a little bit before I remove it to loosen up uh, the posts. And I didn't do that. So as you saw, when I took it out, the post was stuck to the shelf. 
That could prove dangerous because if it drops off, it could land back inside on the pieces that I've made and, um, and break them. So this is a set of three uh, lamps, uh, little lanterns. Um, they're really, really fun to make. They're about, uh, oh, let me see, probably four inches, four inches wide at the mouth. And um, I just make a, uh, a round, sil rounded cylinder is really all I did. And then I just take a tool and I punched out all the holes. I did use uh, chartreuse underglaze. This is opulent sea spray. And I did use chartreuse underglaze on the inside only. And um, I made a set of these for a friend of mine for Christmas and I like them so much that I've made a set for myself. So uh, I'm really, really happy with these. They, they came out exactly as I intended. Um, this one, I don't know, maybe this one can show up the chartreuse a little bit more on the, on the inside. Anyway, there you go. And for the same lady who I'm giving the, these, um, these two, uh, she ordered a dog bowl. <laughs> So I made this large dog bowl. It is, my hands are four inches across, so it's easy for me to measure pieces. This is about eight inches across. It is Blue Monday on the inside. And I had a little overdrip of sea spray and I decided just to leave it. And I have sea spray on the outside. And then I did an underglaze, um, wrote woof. And then I covered it with Mark's wax on and uh, so that when I glaze the outside, the glaze wouldn't stick to the lettering. So I'm really, really happy with this, and I know my client will be as well. So this, this is an a, a absolute winner, and I'm almost sorry I have to give it away, but I can make more. That's the beauty about being a potter, is when you like something so much, you can make more. Okay, this is just a bowl to go uh, to a friend of mine who broke one of hers, and so I'm just replacing it. So it's Opulence Eggshell. And Blue Monday, I dipped the rim in Blue Monday down to, oh, hardly anything. It's not even half an inch maybe. But with the um, eggshell, it does give a little bit of run. So it turned out really, really nicely. And they're going uh, to gonna like this. Okay. So I'm working on uh, creating um, a, a line of... Um, a line of, of pots for uh, a, a little art shop up the road. And so I made this and I carved a little bit on the bottom. And I've done this in a celadon. So I've ordered from Amico some other celadon glazes, which are, uh, are on their way to Jamaica. And um, so this is just one that I have in stock. It's a celadon green, but I've ordered some other colors that, they, that they've asked me to make. So I'm really happy with that. That turned out really, really nicely. And it has a mate in, the, in a tall form. So this one is just a little mini mug. It's only three inches tall. And this is a regular size mug. Same, same, same design, um, just a little bit larger. So this is for, uh, for whatever you want anyway. Um, and I glazed the bottom on one and not the other so it'd be see what they want and uh and they turned out they turned out really really nicely and i like the celadon because the celadon shows all the carving that i did on the bottom <clears throat> okay two more pieces and this is done in i really like this this is a really pretty mug this is done in rainforest and it's three coats of Amico Rainforest. It's a Celadon glaze. And it says for the same people, and I thought it's a little more masculine than, uh, than the pastel colors that they've requested. So I'm gonna present this to them and say, you know, do you like this one? But this is Rainforest, three coats on the inside and three coats on the outside. So I'm really pleased. I love the color of Rainforest. It's just very simple, it's very elegant. It's really a nice pot. And my last pot is, um, oh, I have those, the little ones to show you that are sitting here on the side. And this is, uh, again, part of the series for the, the shop up the road. 
and this is in Jess's Chun Blue. So um, again, I chose this because of the way the texture throws through. So I drew lines and then I put little dots of, of slip um, and I dotted around the top and I dotted around the bottom. So uh, that's just a design I came up with. Um, I'm sure other people have come up with it over the years, but it's something that I've made. And I like the way the, uh, the handle, uh, I did an extruded handle. Um, I love the way Jess has taught us how to make handles and it works very well for me. But because these are being done in Celadon, I thought with the, with the extruder, it gives me uh, a little better shape than what I can make myself. So I did, I extruded that handle. So I'm really, really happy with that. And finally, um, I need to show you, sorry, I'm, it's very warm. Oh, sorry, I hate to do that on camera. Anyway, um, I'm presenting to Kevin a series of videos that I did on making, uh, on making these two pieces. And um, they are textured dishes and, and they came out perfect. I'll just do one at a time. Um, Anyway, this came out absolutely perfect. And it is uh, dipped in the Celadon green and, and the texture shows up beautifully. I used an MKM textured roller as I, as I made the piece. I just made a flat disc on the, uh, on the wheel. I rolled um, in the pattern and then I took a, um, a wooden rib and I just kind of, uh, I don't know how to say it. I pressed on the inside very slowly and I just lifted up the wall so as not to disturb the pattern on the inside. So that pattern was made even before the dish was formed. And I'm really, really thrilled in how that has turned out. And the other one is the same pattern and it's in Jess's Chun. And um, it was uh, dipped and held in there for three seconds. And this was dipped and held in for two seconds. So this one is a little bit lighter and shows the texture a little bit better. Um, Jess's um, chun is a very thick glaze. So I know that next time I will, um, I will only hold it in for maybe a second um, or two seconds. I'm not disappointed with this at all. You can certainly see the texture of the piece. So that's it. Uh, my kiln is empty and, uh, and that's all I have to share with you today. So thank you all very much for watching and, um, and I hope that everybody has a really wonderful Sunday. I'm going to go out and uh, see if I can just relax my back and maybe be able to throw some pottery tomorrow. So keep your fingers crossed everybody. Have a really wonderful day and thanks for watching.